Things I don't know much about it. I've seen it everywhere. Is it a European instrument? Is it? It's really an ancient Egyptian and Sumerian instrument. <laughs> Mind so it's blown. yeah, it started um, the first harps that have been found. Um, were found, uh, occurred, or were built in 2500 BC in Sumeria and Egypt. Um, and they just evolved from there. And actually, what I find interesting is each culture around the world had its own harp. So, you know, the African harp is the Kora. Um, in China, they have the Guzhong. Um, in Japan, they have the Koto, which are different iterations of the harp, but they're all like their own version. Um, and of course, in uh, Latin America, there is the Janera, which is um, Paraguayan harp and Colombian harps. Um, every culture really developed their own iteration of it. And then it developed in Europe. The harp that I play I did today not, I did is not know this. developed in Europe. So, so it kind of was, it was around in the ancient world, um, developing at various timelines. I wish I could go down that rabbit hole. That's a whole other essay yeah, 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 yeah. for another day but another show yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it developed around the world and then uh the harp we really know the concert harp had its origins in ireland and scotland with the lever harp or the folk irish harp um that's a more simple harp like the one in found in egypt or sumeria that is just a you know a triangular frame and what they added um, were levers that would be raised up and down to change the pitches. Mm. And so, you know, the harp really developed in Ireland and then from there um, developed throughout Europe as a single action harp with one level of pedals. Okay. So you could do kind of one, one level of chromaticism, not fully chromatic yet. Okay. And that's the harp that was around in like the 17th, 18th centuries. Um, and then finally in, in the 1800s, the double action mechanism developed to make the harp fully chromatic. So then it was able to be part of the orchestra and play any note in any key at any time. <laughs> Could we possibly hear something? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about it or do you want to surprise us? What, what works best? I could I could talk about it in the way that the story behind this was, I believe I was practicing for an orchestral audition. <laughs> um, and, you know, I have a background in orchestra and I perform, I recently perform with Baltimore Symphony and perform with Delaware Symphony and other orchestras around the region. Um, I was practicing all my excerpts and any any orchestral musician knows like when you practice excerpts, it's it's it can get very the point is to be repetitive the point is to be um to really 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 uh make sure you have your repetitions in and so i kind of wanted wanted to shake up my own like refresh myself musically a little is, bit is this the kind of person you are are you are you a shaker are you <laughs> no i'm really um i i really love the the tradition of music and I love then going outside of that and pushing the boundaries uh, okay so I think you need to honor both I think you need to you need to really know where you're coming from where your music is coming from and and understand history and 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 the traditions that were you know that built the music and then you can take that and 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 go outside as my mom says, uh, learn the rules and then break them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, this um, performance is in the spirit of that, is it? Is this one of? The... Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So this is an arrangement I started. I found, um, and I started playing it, and I just loved how the way it's arranged, the chords um, create that lush harp sound, but then you have a melody, and you have you know it's recognizable. So. Fantastic. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Steiner, Mags FM. Enjoy.
song mean to you well that song you know of course I like Drake and I I never thought I would be playing hotline bling on the harp but um as I did more research first of all I love the arrangement when I found the arrangement I loved um the seventh chords and how th- it's just nicely suited to the instrument um and it brings the sound of the harp out in an, in a cool way um, but I think it's, it's a sad love song. I mean, it's really, it's really, and, and when I researched the song, it's, you know, written by Timmy Thomas and it's, why can't we live together? Mm-hmm. It's a song from the se- mm-hmm. soul song from the seventies. And, and that, well, that song is more about society and why can't we all ex- coexist as, you know, different people from different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, when I heard the original version brought so much depth to my understanding and my interpretation of the song. I, I think, it, yeah, I think it goes back to what you mentioned about how people typically think of the harp and people will see a harp and say, oh, that's pretty or, oh, that's very beautiful. And I love, I love the sound. I love the sound. Um, and sometimes it takes a melody that people recognize to, to bring them into the sound world of the instrument because the instrument is so mysterious. It's so large and rare and it's, you know, it's like this unicorn, like you never see it. <laughs> so, but if they have something, they, uh, if when you have something, a melody that's familiar to people, um, I think they can tune in more 
And I, I appreciate that just, um, you know, as a musician, because I think, and as a harpist, because it can um, just bring awareness to what we're doing. How people can find out more about you? 